So again, let's take this history and we'll just go all the way back to where we just had this plane here. And if we turn on our floor, you're gonna see this is kind of sitting uh, on that Y direction. So our floor is down here and things will collide with it. So one of the things we did in our live stream was essentially, and we kind of already done this before. We can go in here to dynamic, turn smooth down to zero, uh, choose micro poly, and we can add any one of these like this tube here. We can say align all these in the same direction. If you go down here, there's scale and fit and weld. So right now with everything fit and scaled and welded, as long as these are set up correctly in that floor grid square, uh, everything will work just fine. However, you don't have to have it work like that. Uh, you can turn off weld and then when you hit apply, those points won't weld. Um, you can also turn off fit. So when I go in here and I scale this up, these things will start overlapping. Now if I have fit turned on and I start scaling, it's actually gonna just scale in uh, one direction. But if I wanna scale these Let's go ahead and rotate X so they're all individual components here. Um, so with fit turned on, I can scale them. And again, they're just gonna scale in one direction here. If I turn fit off, now they're gonna uniformly scale out and I'm gonna get them to overlap a little bit. Now you gotta remember, uh, these are just assigned to these planes here. But the cool thing is, uh, if I turn dynamic off, we go down here to geometry, modify topology, unweld all. Every single one of these squares here is now unwelded. So if I have gravity turned on and collision volume and self-collision, actually collision volume, we go ahead and turn off. It's gravity on, self-collision on, floor collision on, and I turn dynamic back on. Those individual plane faces are now being, are now driving this micro poly mesh. So if I turn this off and I run the simulation, it's just gonna look like a bunch of cards falling. If I turn this on and run the simulation, now it's gonna look like every single one of those components is uh, which is really just a plane with that component on there. Uh, they'll go in and collide with each other. Uh, but in reality, it's just planes colliding with each other. So that's kind of cool. And again, you can make this a custom mesh. So what we can do is go out of edit mode, hit control N. Let's grab a poly mesh 3D star, drag it on our canvas, go into edit mode. Let's go to BI brush insert industrial parts. Let's hit W and when I have W selected, which is our gizmo, we can actually cycle through here and just grab any piece that we want. There's also a Z plugin that I don't have loaded, but there's a Z plugin that you can go download from the PixLogic Download Center, and you can actually convert all of these things into subtools uh, with a button click. But for now, we can just, you know, go ahead and grab like a Phillips head screw, go back to that plane we we're messing around with, and we can just replace all of these. Hold down Control and tap, grab that Phillips head, and now all of these have been replaced by a Phillips head screw. And again, it's just dynamic, it's just micro poly, it doesn't exist yet, they're just instances. But because we have fit and weld off, we can play around with the scale. We can scale them all individually. I'm gonna over crank them just a bit so they kind of fill up that plane. And again, if these are all unwelded, and we go through here and we just run the simulation, now it's gonna be a bunch of self collision uh, driven things. Now these ones, you can tell the padding is kind of keeping them a little bit artificially separated. So I'm probably going to scale this up maybe to 2, 2.1. There we go. Fits them together a little bit. A little bit more. So anyway, have fun with that. And remember you always have the fit, weld, and scale options that you can use to your advantage or you can turn them off and use that to your advantage. Now another thing you can do is, uh, let's go back to where we just, again, just had the plane. We had dynamic turned on, to go ahead and delete higher. Uh, smooth so div down to zero. Let's reconstruct one more time and delete higher. So we got our plane here. We have our micro poly on. We'll go ahead and choose those things again. We can hit a line and align them all in the same direction. We can rotate Z to change the direction as well. And again, these are just polygons. If we turn off dynamic, we just have uh, polygon faces that are driving these. So we can go through here with our move brush and move these around. But if we turn weld off and fit off, as I move those planes around, these things are just going to start scattering. So as I go through here and kind of move these polygons around, they're going to stay the same size. If I, if I have these on, they're going to want to stick together and they're going to want to keep kind of being stretched across that surface that's being stretched as I move. But again, you can turn those off and now as you move those polygons, they'll start scattering. So it's another thing you can kind of maybe use to your advantage if it's uh, a result that you're looking for.